This video is brought to you by Skillshare. I have a confession to make. I have been putting off this video for weeks, and I have plenty of excuses for that, from holidays to travel, but at the end of the day, the reason this review has been delayed so many times is because every time I pick up the Pixel Slate, all I really want to do is put it back down. Folks, I don't like to dogpile, and I genuinely thought that waiting a little bit longer would give Google time to smooth out the rough edges here, or expose some unseen magic everyone else had missed. But after two months, it seems to me that all the other reviews are spot on. The Pixel Slate is trying to be both tablet and laptop, and it's really not great at either one. First off, it's just too big to be a workable tablet. With a 12.3-inch display, it's smaller than the supersized iPad Pro, but it feels just as awkwardly huge in the hand. The fingerprint sensor on the top is a great use of otherwise wasted space on paper, but in practice, it makes it awkward to unlock the tablet while you're holding it. The hardware itself is well-balanced. It feels good and it looks sleek, but you know, it reminds me of the Microsoft Surface Book 2. By which I mean, yeah, you can pop off the clipboard, but the second you do, you realize that this thing really wants to be attached to a keyboard. But where the Surface Book 2 comes with a keyboard, the Pixel Slate charges you extra for the privilege. Two keyboards came with my review unit, Google's own folio style and a third-party model from Bridge, and I didn't really like either one. Google's folio is slim, and despite what some are saying about its curious round keys, I find them very comfortable to type on. But the way this thing folds out, it takes up so much acreage that you can pretty much forget about using it on a lap, unless you're very tall. Maybe it's no surprise that the person who first pointed this out to me was PocketNow's Jaime Rivera. Short guy solidarity, my friend. Plus, the keyboard doesn't anchor to the bottom of the screen like a surface, so it kind of flops around in a lap. And even when you close it, it kind of squirms around like a half-melted Oreo. You mean, did you look at this? I hate this. Now, the Bridge keyboard doesn't have that issue, but it is much heavier, adding one and a half pounds to an already weighty package. It's also got these oversized hinges in the corners. I remember these from the iPad model and had the same complaint there. Now, it does last six months on a charge, and it really makes the Pixel Slate feel laptopy. But is that worth another 160 bucks? Not while the Pixel Book still exists, if you ask me. On top of that stuff, performance is a mixed bag. I have the Core i5 model with 8 gigs of RAM, and while it's not slow, per se, it definitely doesn't feel as fluid as most Android tablets, to say nothing of the iPad. Now, I'm not the biggest fan of iOS, but in a world where the iPad dominates the tablet space, you've got to at least approach that device's smoothness if you want to compete, and the Pixel Slate doesn't even get close. Animations have dropped frames, the system feels much more jittery than it should given the power, and even after many updates, little details like rounded corners on notification windows here, they pop in and out with each animation. Android apps also break with surprising regularity, and even basic things like the software keyboard are fidgety and unreliable. Now, I knew there were people out there who really enjoyed their Pixel Slate, so I went to Reddit to see the bright points of owning one. And those bright points do exist. The way it tightly integrates with a Pixel smartphone, having the desktop version of Chrome on a tablet, loud front-firing speakers, seamless automatic updates, and the sheer number of available Android apps, reliability aside. Battery life, in my experience, has also been great, easily getting me through a full day of writing with a lot of tabs open. And the developers in the crowd really like that you can run Linux and Chrome on the same device. But you know where you can also get most of these? On last year's Google Pixel Book. It doesn't pack the battery life, and it's a generation behind on the processor, but it's also cheaper. And in my opinion, a much more focused and generally just better product. My final thoughts on the Pixel Slate after a quick word from that sponsor I talked about at the top, and I think a lot of you will find it useful. This video is brought to you by Skillshare, an online learning community with thousands of classes, ranging from tech to design to business, just to name a few. Now, you may have heard of programs like it, but Skillshare is more affordable than most. Less than $10 a month gets you unlimited access. Plus, you can choose from more than 20,000 classes taught by experts who are actually working in their fields. 
You might remember last year on Skillshare, I was trying to up my Instagram game with photography classes. This year, I'm getting video tips from working cinematographers. But you know, this isn't about me. Build your list of the classes that excite you so you can do the work you love better. Visit Skillshare at the link in the description right now, and you'll get two months absolutely free. Happy learning, and thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. For all its foibles, I do think Pixel Slate is a glimpse of the future of tablets. To bring back the Microsoft analogy one more time, remember how that first Microsoft Surface about six years ago was basically a joke? Well, now the Surface defines the convertible category on the Windows side. There's similar potential here. Chrome OS is a simple and secure operating system that millions already know how to use. And when the slate is docked to the keyboard, it handles inputs from the touchscreen and the trackpad with alacrity. That, among other things, is what makes it feel so much better suited to real work than an iPad. And that's what gives me hope for the future of devices like this. In optimized form, this could be the perfect blend of mobile and desktop computing. If Chrome OS was better refined, and if the slate came in a smaller form factor, and if it had a better keyboard case, and if it weren't so expensive, I'd feel differently about it. But that's a lot of ifs, and they're not all fixable through updates. While I'm still looking forward to trying what's next from Google, the company that brought us such trailblazers as the Nexus 7, the end of this review brings me back to where I started. The Pixel Slate feels, to me, like an unfortunate misstep, and I won't miss it when I move on. Pixel Slate owners, I know you're out there, and I do want to hear from you. Do you love your device, or did you ditch it for something else, or are you somewhere in between? Sound off in the comments, and folks, please subscribe to the Mr. Mobile on YouTube and Instagram. Up next, a Windows laptop that I feel substantially better about. Until next time, thanks for watching, and stay mobile, my friends.